Welcome back to Springy Family Gaming. It's Mummy McSpringy here, and it's late at night, as per usual. And what do we do late at night? Of course, we do spooky stuff. <laughs> and today, tonight, I'm going to build one more of these spooky trees. Yes, my ghost tree. The one I have filled with pumpkins. I am going to attempt to build another one so you can have a go for yourself. Um, as you'll notice I've attached some flashing things to this tree and I'll show you what I've got here. This here is a delay. It's set to the lowest setting and one part of the one output switch goes just directly to the neon wire on the tree and the other part is looped around to the X or input here, the other part of the X or input, so it's one or the other, and that is a lever, and then directly from this X or gate straight into the delay, loops around and sends a signal flashing. That's how that works. Pretty cool, eh? So that's kind of like a welcome sign, I suppose. Now, what we need to do is to chop down another elm. So let's go over here. There's a nice, great big one over here. We have to practice our tree tipping to get it over to the base. And then we have to maneuver it to get it to go upright. So first we will grab out the axe and chop along the bottom nice and straight here we have it now we have to treat of it back to the base And the tricky part now comes in getting it upright. So we're first going to lift it into the air. See where it lands. Okay. Then we are going to bring it this way, but carefully. It's not easy to do. So what I'm doing with it is I mouse on it, hold down my left mouse, Hold the shift key, then press S and start maneuvering it. I'm aware that I will move as well. So I still have a grip on it because you can see this down the bottom there's a little bit of a bubble thing going on there. Alright, and I'm just going to let it fall closer and closer to my base. The one thing I have to be careful of is that I'm always with my back to the base so that the tree does not go flying way off in that direction because it works in the opposite way. So let's uh, tilt it up and move back, tilt it up. Shift, oh, da, a bit much. <laughs> okay upside down this is why this is so tricky there is what I need and now it's up around around the wrong way so let's just give it a little bit of a oh what's that hanging on we're gonna have to flip it again oh. <laughs> as I said it's hard to do it's very hard so 
keep trying. Last time it took me an hour to get it into position. Alright, now it's on the base, but not in a very good place. It's actually very stuck. Let's uh, give it a flip. Alright. There'll be a lot of this, just so you know. I might have to do a speed clip till I get it right. Okay, we've got it. We've got the tree upright. Now, I know it's on a truck spawner right now. <laughs> We're going to have to move that. Let's hopefully... We can move that now. Without too much problem. Just put that there. Yes, it's still upright. And it rested nicely. Let's move this. That there. Okay, we have the tree. Excellent. So, when I'm feeding the wires up the tree, I have to make sure that I leave a little space for tiles underneath it. So, I'll have to be careful how I put them in. Let's see if we've got any white wire first. And we've got one. Oops. We'll just take this with us. Right, wrapping the wires around the base without it glitching is quite tricky. So, first thing we have to do is we're just going to make a point on the longest edge that the branch follows up. We're just going to like a resting point for this wire. It requires the ground. Just put that down there. F. I've got some regular wires over here. Grab one of those. We're going to start it off here and, oops, back there, E, and we're going to go to the tree, F, right, take the white wire and we're going to attach it to that connection. We're going to go around. So, do you know we'll go up? We'll go to the first point and part way up the second. E. Right. There we have it, the first wire. We need more. A lot more. So we are going to have to go over to 
the lynx logic but it's pitch black it's night time you know um, that's going to be quite tricky they won't be open I need about 25 wires to do a tree at least so I will need to take a truck over to Lynx Logic to get the wires well it looks like it's lightning over there on the horizon I need to move this truck Right, let's just pop it down. Spawn it. Jump in. And we'll go see if the boat is there. Now, a couple of tips with Hoover. When there are big bases like mine, the estimated time of around seven and a half minutes goes out the window it will take maybe about 10 minutes before the boat will em embark and disembark or you'll be able to do that uh, also if you buy a ticket but then jump in your truck and leave and the boat leaves as long as you stay in the server you can go back on the boat without having to pay for another ticket so that's one handy tip another thing is that it's a one-way ticket so once you go over to the tropics biome you need to disembark and then buy another ticket before you can return back to the mainland of lumberland now, he's a bit of a troublemaker this hoover i mean you only live once and who knows exactly what up his, is up his sleeve apart from kind of ripped ripped sailor t-shirt hmm so we're just gonna kind of wait here i suppose wait here to leave and we'll we'll keep doing this we'll hassle him you know like are we there yet are we there yet but instead we'll just you know chat to hoover and find out when his next run is all the time. Two minutes and 31 seconds. Okay. Notice me. <laughs> Remain seated. No, I want to dance. I want to dance. I don't want to sit down. you around so up here we have uh, oak elm birch and koa wood koa is this multicolored foliage here and it has a kind of a brownie orange colored uh, wood which I use a lot for on my base all over it if we keep following this wall around we come to the maze now the maze does get dark I don't know if it still gets dark so I will stop here at this ramp and see if the maze changes to dark does it trigger here? it 
don't want to take the risk. Because we are here for wires and we don't want to get sidetracked. Maybe I can turn around. I don't know. I'm, I don't want to take the risk. If the maze goes dark, then we get stuck down there. I won't be able to get all these wires and that was the purpose of our trip today. Okay. So this is the area of the tropics biome. Oh, and you can see that it's just a percentage flashing in the sky. There you go. See that? Let me just zoom out so you can see it. Looks like it says 006. But anyway, we follow this road from the boat across here and we get to Lynx Logic. Now it is getting lighter but it's still not light enough for the shop to be open so we're just going to park up. Nice and close, right along the close edge of this where a tree can't grow. Here we go. Open the back of the flatbed. Awesome. Ah, oh, I can. Alright, just going to open the door. Here we go. Right, I'm in. Okay, welcome to Link's Logic. Before the dawn. That's right, it's pretty dark in here and you can see me glowing quite eerily. But I'm going to show you around while we are sneaking about. First, let's meet Link. She's hiding behind here and she is asleep. Look at her. Oh, so cute. Haha. <laughs> Check her out. Got the coat on. Got a smile on. Must be having a happy dream, I think. Having happy dreams here, Link. Anyway, Link is asleep. This is the neon wire. We have red, orange, yellow, green, cyan, uh, blue, violet, and white. And we need lots of white. Back to some of my favourite things here. Well, you can't really see them very well in this light, but these are inverters. Signal inverters, I use them all the time to switch colours on my lights. Okay, over here we have AND gate, which means that one side has two inputs and both have to be active for the output signal to be working to be true. So, it's good for coded doors because what you can do is separate one wire off over here and another one way off over here on a grid and that will send a true signal output. Um, and someone would have to guess the right combination of AND gates in order to make something work or something open like hatches or you know, so in any case, you could create a coded door with AND gates, which would be a lot of fun. Over here, you've got an OR gate, which means that either the left or right input has to be on or active in order for the output signal to work well, but both cannot be working at the same time, so it's one or the other. So that's how an OR gate works. Over here we have X OR gate, so you can have both OR, either OR, so you don't need both, and this, this is what I use a lot, I use X OR gate um, for my, um, my sliding door, I have both inputs attached to separate levers, so flipping up or down turns, it, turns the conveyors into a different direction, either OR. Alright, now it's too dark for me to show you these, but over here we've got signal sustain and you'll notice on the sustain, on this black bar here, there are no lines. That's how you know it's a sustain. The sustain sustains the output signal for a set amount of time depending on how, many, how much you increase it by. So you can ma make a brief signal or a longer signal. On the other side we have signal delay. So what it'll do is an input signal will come in 
and the output will not go out until a set amount of time. And that is the difference between that. So the signal will come in, and then it will think about it for as long as you like, and then once that time is reached, then this will come on and the output will work. Good for doing uh, lumber chop systems and wood sorting systems. Yeah, Link. Right, over here we've got wood sorters, a wood, a wood detector. Wood detector, you put a cube of wood in the top and when it recognises through the laser beam that particular wood passing through it, it will generate an output signal on the other side of the wood detector which you can hook up to conveyors or wood switches uh, or conveyor switches to change the direction of a conveyor so it will send wood in a direction that you like you want it to or it could keep a hatch down or it could open a hatch or it could do any number of things um, and also um, Jerex I don't know if you've met Jerex yet but he's uh, on the wiki uh, he's the head of the wiki and the group and in any case he uses a wood sorter uh, system on his base as a coded door I think which is or a coded hatch so that's very cool you have to have the right type of wood in there you have to to in order to, for it to work very cool okay so that's the wood detectors now over here we have lasers so a laser is the laser and the laser detector detects the signal and has the output so that's how that works they kind of work together so the beams reach each other over here we've got pressure plates now pressure plates are great I use pressure plates in a couple of different ways uh, obviously for uh, the wood touching the pressure plate and sending a signal to the chop saw to start the chop saw. Another way I use it is on the barbecue. I actually flip them around the other way and I get a grey slate square. So I use it aesthetically to look cool as well as being functional. So having a signal and doing something. Also um, my little mini front hatch gate is operated by standing on hatches and then opens outwards. And that design came from Ticta Twert, which you may know of. She does uh, base videos. So uh, that's um, good uses for pressure plates. Also, in my kitchen, right along the top edge, I've got the grey side of these pressure plates showing as a design concept. Yep, okay. Um, right, these are levers. I use them everywhere. You've seen me use them. Uh, that's how I generate a signal that will stay on. Now a button is just a one thing. It's You just press it and as soon as you lift off, the signal goes off. So I haven't found a really good use for buttons except for the way they look. They look kind of cool. Ah, oh, link is open. So that's that. Um, okay, uh, wires. We all love regular wires. They're great. Now back to here, that's what I wanted to show you with the sustains and the delays. So um, how do you tell the difference? I mean if you look at the boxes they look almost identical. Well, the signal sustain has no bars as I said before. The signal delay has lots of little bars. You can see them there, loads of them. So sustain, no bars, delay, lots of bars. Now you can see side by side. The difference. Okay, let's get our white neon. Twenty-three to go. 
We might even go for 30. We need lots of it, so we'll just see how many we can get. Oh, before I go on. Speed by. for the boat. Okay, the boat is here. Get our load onto the boat. Have another chat to Hoover. Hey Hoover. Oh yes, you do run this ferry. When's the next run? Six minutes and 37 seconds. Not bad. I will buy a ticket. Thanks. Right. But this journey is not completely wasted, for I am going to move my truck a little bit to one side. Let's move it over here. Very carefully. We have six minutes. We have a little longer than six minutes, to be honest. Right. Stop there. Great. Pop out. Let's go cut some birch. We do need birch. One more time with Hoover. Right, two minutes and 22 seconds. I think we'll just wait this one out now. Just get the door open. Oh, door doesn't want to open. Well, I'll sit in the car anyway. a bit glitchy but hey we made it safe and sound so let's jump out and move one of these out of the way to carry on building up this spook wood tree. Let's go.
we reload menu load reload slot There you have it, my two awesome white wire trees called my ghost trees. What do you think? If you like, please be sure to let me know, leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe and keep watching for more spooky content as we get closer to Halloween. Yes, and of course I'll be doing more work on Build Wars, so we'll catch you again next time. Bye!